The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas, the EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the advanced extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angel, and my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of wikibon.org. And our next guest is the president of the Advanced Software Division, Amitabh Srivastava. Welcome back to theCUBE, alumni. Did I get that right? Yes, okay, absolutely. Good. Thank you very much. I was much. practicing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I got to say, last year, um, we had a very memorable conversation yes. here in theCUBE. And we were totally geeking out on the software-led infrastructure, software-defined enterprise. Essentially, the stuff we talked about was on the keynote, pretty much yes. Joe Tucci's messaging. Yes, um, absolutely. That means you're in the right spot within EMC. <laughs> What's next year's keynote going to be? <laughs> 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 Let's talk about that, okay. Fast, fast, Dave, fast forward. <laughs> we're going to talk about software, all flash arrays, in line, got a million dollar guarantee, Viper's hitting the scene. OpenStax on the round the equation, cloud foundries out there. The software layer moving up the stack seems to be the battleground. Yes. What's your take on that? So, I, I, I agree with it. The, the um, you know, lot, lot more intelligence is moving at the, at the software layer. At the lower level, I think the world is still going to get more and more complex. And the, and the one who makes it simple wins. Uh, that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's the element that we are going after. So, you know, like we talked last time, David, we, we, we thought that the, um, our view was that the storage infrastructure is going to consist of hardware arrays, I mean, EMC arrays, non-EMC arrays, and commodity arrays. I mean, that's the, um, now, innovation is still going to happen, and new elements are going to come in, like flash and SSDs, and, you know, now we, you saw the, the new acquisition uh, that we have done. A lot more, a lot of these different innovations are going to happen which essentially means that a, you, know, you can come up with, uh, with, uh, with more and more powerful hardware, but the software now gets to, take the, uh, you gets to utilize the power that the hardware has got and make it more and more applicable for the various workloads that are there. So I got to ask you, one of the things we've been observing this past year, one of the trends that Dave and I kind of see coming out, kind of had the epiphany at the Apple uh, 30th anniversary of the Mac in Cupertino. I, I attended, a lot of my friends were on the team, and, mm -hmm. And um, even though I'm a little bit older than I am, but <laughs> it was a really a geek celebration from mm -hmm. the old tinkerers, the old hardware guys, the homebrew computer club. Yep. We're seeing a shift now in today's market where a, a maker markets, you know, the, the homebrew like tinkerer hardware is back. Mm -hmm. Open compute, the yes. data center, build your own. Yes. And you mentioned things are getting complex. What, how does that trend of the maker movement intersect with some of those low level complexities and, and how does software solve that? Yes. You're seeing Raspberry Pi, people are hacking drones. You're seeing some coolness around These, hardware geeks. Yes. But you don't need a friend who works at Intel to get stuff. Yes. So how, does, how do you make sense so, of that? So I think the, the key thing that the industry has to make sure is that the applications don't get affected by all the tinkering that is happening on the, on the hardware side. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, if you look at on the compute side, that's what happened with virtualization of compute, right? The, 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 so the abstraction layer needs to be coming in so that the, now the, you have to separate the applications from the hardware layer. And that's why the layers like Viper starts becoming very important because they can separate or, the, the software layer from the hardware layer. So while these tinkering things come out and certain applications are going to run faster because just because of the, they're more suitable for the workloads, applications don't fundamentally need to sort of like change there. So that's the only way the simplification is going to happen uh, from, from my perspective. So somebody made the point today, it might have been you, I don't know if it was an analyst meeting or a keynote, you know, they all blend mm -hmm. together, right? But somebody said, you know, enterprise applications really haven't changed much yes. over the last several decades. Uh, in fact, I think it was Mark Hurd at Oracle Open World said the average age of an uh, enterprise app is 19 years, Correct. right? Now, but the infrastructure is starting to change Dramatically. dramatically, you see the hyperscale stuff start entering the enterprise. Yes. That's you know that's your world, right? Yes. Um, well, well, we see a similar transformation of applications. You know, you see applications popping up all the, over the place. You get zillions of applications on your on your phone, and you you could download them. Will enterprise apps start to to look like consumer apps? Yes. 
So if you look, if you, today in my keynote, I was comparing two parts. There were, you know, there were sort of companies which were really, were born in platform two, but are, trans are, are, tra are moving to platform three. But if you look at the companies which are now getting born on platform three, okay, mm -hmm. they have no restrictions, right. right? And if you look at it, that they are coming up with these models we have never thought before. And you know, I had a, uh, an example of Andy Ammo, which was a startup um, in Shoreditch uh, in London, they were doing it. They're using a completely different, uh, completely different model. There's another startup we were talking about, which doesn't use any storage, it only uses compute. Okay, <laughs> so, so, so the traditional architecture that we were talking about are now gonna go away, and people are utilizing the fact that they say, okay, how will I write my app if I have, was, was guaranteed that there is hyperscale compute, hyperscale storage, hyperscale everything is available to me. How will I construct and rewrite this app? How will I design this app? And I think that's the phenomenon which are going to be happening, but these are going to be those applications which were born on, application, on, on platform three. And I think the startups are going to be the first place that you're going to see all of these things happening. And ultimately, right now the enterprises are first moving to platform three. Once that problem is solved, I think you'll start seeing the fundamental changes in these in these which is virtually populations. virtually unlimited resources. Unlimited resources. And 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 I would I would just put out there no 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 spinning disk latency. Uh, <laughs> even though, so even, though, even though your forecast and IDC's forecast to say very very small portion of the market will be will be flash, I think where the value is is going to be a lot higher. Yeah, I think I think the the uh, you know with all of these things are coming, it's going to be kind of like this tier thing. Yeah. And so, depending upon the applications that you're, I mean, when the, the cost of flash, you know, even if it comes down, but you can, even with like the cheaper disk, you can get very far. Yeah. And so, depending upon how cost sensitive you are or how performance sensitive you are, there's a place for uh, all of these different courses things. Courses for courses. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I gotta, I gotta ask you about some of the, uh, the, the trends around OpenStack and the cloud mm -hmm. and all these things that are coming on the pike. Mm -hmm. How do you see that affecting some of the storage architectures, because is it going to be abstracted away? What's your take on that? So if you look at it, everyone is trying uh, on the storage architectures, even if you look at OpenStack, what is it doing? It's a, at the simplest level, what it's trying to do is, is there a uniform way to talk to all the arrays? Today, every array talks differently. Somebody talks with SMIS, somebody talks with CLIs, somebody talks with REST APIs, right? So if you look at what even the Cinder plugins that, that the OpenStack has, mm -hmm. what they're saying is, okay, if everybody writes a Cinder, uh, uses uh, the Cinder, plug, builds a Cinder plugin, then people can use the Cinder APIs to talk to all the arrays. So everyone is going for more and more in the direction of standardizing and talking to these different arrays with different characteristics coming in in a uniform way. Mm -hmm. Wiper takes it a step further than that, which just says, no, no, I only don't need only need a uniform way to talk about it. How about if I virtualize it? Uh, how about if I pull all of those things out and then you can now carve it into these virtual resources there? And I think that's the layer I was talking about is as the, this layer gets more and more abstracted and more powerful, that's where the separation between the applications and do, the hardware. Do people ask in. an obvious question there? Is okay, but is that layer? Does that layer cause overhead? Does it does it add, add inefficiencies? Yes. And how, how do you, what do you what do you? And, and in my opinion, is that's why if you look at how we approach, that's a very valid question, and I think that was the reason why uh, uh, storage is the last to get virtualized. <laughs> yeah. um, and and the, and the, and that's why we, the way we approached it by is by splitting the control and the data plane. So yeah. you can get all the virtualization, all the abstraction all the management and a lot of the things that they're talking about just by being in the control plane without affecting the data plane out. So you do not impact at all the performance of any of these arrays or the, or the, the key value that they provide. Because you know, if, you're gonna, if you paid a lot of money buying a VMAX and you slowed it down, um, that product's not gonna sell. Um, and right. so, so that's why if you get, let Wiper do it, Wiper does majority of the stuff in, in the control plane side, and it's very opportunistic on the data plane side. So it's in the data path for object, HDFS, but for block, it stays away. So, you know, when I talk to, I talk to a lot of EMC customers over the years, the number one complaint is always, oh, I got so many platforms. But that really is the, you know, the only big complaint mm -hmm. that, that you hear. Uh, and, and Viper is a way to consolidate yes. that and, and, and normalize it. And I can see, <clears throat> uh, and we're going to have Brian Gallagher on tomorrow, but I can see Symmetrics living in that, or Vmax living in that environment for a long, long time. It's going to be a long time before your stack yes. matches this. Absolutely. Maybe not in our lifetime. I, I don't <laughs> know. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But but the rest of the portfolio, mm -hmm. uh, maybe with some exceptions, it looks like Viper, the stack that you're building mm -hmm. from scratch. You told right. us last year, you got a pretty big TAM to go after. Yeah, no, I think so. I think it's a it's a. If you look at it, the um, uh, 
the, the cloud market, the hyperscale market that, we, that was there, EMC didn't play much in that market. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the market where the, where the public clouds were playing in. And mostly that, that is the one which was sort of like coming out with commodity hardware, uh, you know, the startups and this were playing in. And that's the, that's the, that was a total big market that was sort of like going in. And, and our, we, our focus is like with, with um, ECS and now with Viper with commodity, right? That's the market that we are really trying to go to. And that I believe is a growth market for EMC because that expands my, uh, EMC's reach. EMC was very strong in, in the traditional market that was there, and I don't think that's going to change. You know, with Viper and things like that, we can help that process out. But um, uh, this new market which is emerging, which is growing at a much, much faster rate, now we have, believe we have some of very crucial technologies with ECS and now Viper with commodity that we can now play with that you thing. You mentioned ECS. How's your product manager doing there? Dave Golden tells us he's the, he's the product manager for ECS. <laughs> was he the product manager? <laughs> he, was the, he was the product manager for ECS and we kept on... Uh, Did he write PRDs? <laughs> I want to know. Golden, we're going to call you out on that. We're going to come see you at the Circle Bar later. We're going to say, you never and, wrote a PRD. And, and, you know, and, the, and, the, and we had to say, David, now we have, we're going to take your product management away because I have to actually ship this product. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so he, so he thanks for the was, budget. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, so he said, well, at least I have to meet the product manager who's going to take my job away. And and that product manager was always um, watched very carefully. <laughs> I'm talking warm in advance. It was a gig hit right out of school. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you about a, a trend that we're seeing. So, so in the early days of the, the hyperscale guys, it was the assumption was commodity hardware, and then you're going to layer the software-defined data center on top of it. And now when you talk to the hyperscale guys, they're saying, well, actually, we kind of did a 180. We're doing highly customized hardware. We're doing compute that is you know, super dense, right. you know, that you can't buy in the open market. Um, you know, the networking pieces mm -hmm. are getting you know, more and more customized. Uh, do you see uh, what do you make of that trend? I think there is going to be a combination. So for example, if you look at ECS today, okay, the ECS that we are going to ship today, it's totally built with commodity hardware, right? right? But it's really m designed for the cloud storage workloads. Now, this literally, if you look at the appliance, we've got two network switches there, we've got two servers, we've got all these disks which are there, like, but we were optimizing for cost, right? Yeah. So you, you made it the densest possible things to do that. Now, if you ask me to go build this appliance, for a very different workload. I may design it very differently. Mm -hmm. I may put all flash arrays there. Right. So depending upon which workloads that you're talking about, I think the hardware is gonna, uh, hardware is gonna go evolve. And I, that's why I'm a much more of a believer that uh, of like, it's not all commodity or all specialized. Uh, everybody figures out a sweet spot. And, and that's why I was making the comment that the world is going to get more complex, right? Yeah. And, and, if, and, and if you ha and you have to use the software as a mechanism of making it simpler. So you, I, I guess I didn't formulate my question well, and I think you just answered it, but you don't see the lack of specialized hardware in the enterprise as a problem because essentially the hardware market hates a vacuum and they'll that's always right. fill it. They will know? fill it and they will come back. Yeah. I mean, there's so much, uh, I mean, like DSSDs, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's such, a, such a, it's such a critical technology, right? It will have certain workloads where it'll just, you know, just completely blow it away. So if you were designing a specialized uh, uh, array for certain workloads, I can configure it in a very, very different way. But you know, people will also like to just buy commodity hardware from Fry's and just put the software on it and go build a data center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's okay too. But on the other hand, if you're really running you know, HANA or SAP or Oracle and you really need a very, very specialized thing there, maybe um, you know, for a mission critical application, it's, it's actually okay to spend a little bit, few more dollars and buy more expensive hardware. So I think it'll, it'll all balance off. Um, the key thing is that the complexity that we are introducing now cannot, this will fail, is if the complexity gets visible to the, the operations or to the management of those things there. And that software has to automatically automate that whole process out. If that is achievable, then you can have as much complexity downstairs it doesn't matter, mm, right. applications still grow. I'm gonna have last question, we're gonna break here as we start to wind down our day here. I wanna, but I wanna ask you more of a computer science question. As mm -hmm. the world is growing and changing, mm -hmm. society's impacted, you got wearable computers on the top of the stack, mm -hmm. you know, data centers with storage, yep. cold storage, warm storage, hot storage, whatever you wanna call it. Computer science is changing. What do you see as trends that you're looking at from a computer science standpoint mm -hmm. that, that have your attention, the kind of candidates you guys are looking to hire? Because you're seeing with Viper, you're seeing geo distribution, you're seeing protection across multi-site, all that stuff that, that is now going to be 
very much one global data center from an, from an object standpoint. You got right. block, you got other things. Well, this is this now. So you're starting getting into multiple sciences that right. that are intersecting, and right. and that's all the rage right now in the computer right. science programs. We'll yes. leave this one. What trends in computer science do you like right now that you're watching? Yeah. So so the biggest one I believe that the um, you know um, of course my 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 focus is much more on the software side. It's all on distributed computing. Um, distributed computing is hard. And, <laughs> and, um, and you know, majority of us, when I grew up, or when we grew up, nobody told us how to write distributed programs, right? I mean, you write stateless programs. You write, uh, how do you do distributed debugging? Um, the, the, all of this, exp and it's really hard. When, when a data center goes down, you will not imagine how poor debugging tools are in distributed debugging. You, you know, logs and all of that stuff doesn't sort of like work out. So hmm. the advancements in this whole thing, like compute is not going to just work on a single processor or, or one, one machine. It's going to be distributed over thousands of nodes, multiple of data centers going out. How do you design applications like that? This is the one we are talking about, that applications were designed 19 years ago, Yeah. right? Now if you come back and you go back and say, I've got infinite compute distributed all over the world, how would you go configure this mm, application? Right. You have to design the application, how will it be managed? How will it be debugged, uh, all of those aspects that are coming in? And I think the fundamentals of computer science have to give the, the graduates that are coming in very, very strong foundations on, on, on all aspects of distributed computing. And you got real time, too. That makes That's a right. big dimension in things. Oh, yes. And you got the geography issue, so you got virtualization. <laughs> it's, a perfect, it's actually a good time. It's, it's actually intoxicating at some level, at a computer science level. Oh. A lot of opportunity. It's development oh, renaissance right. coming. It's, uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And the, I mean, this is, this is, I think right now the industry, in my opinion, is at an inflection point. Um, you know, because, you know, before there was an argument whether, you know, how the clouds will take it or not, or take it, or who will get it, or is it just the public clouds or not. But now the, everybody's accepting that fact. That's what we were trying to do. Hyperscale, um, massive scale, it's, it's not limited to these big public clouds or these big service providers. Every enterprise is going to have it, right? right? Yeah. Who's going to write applications for them? Yeah. Who's going to yeah. maintain them? And so these fundamental things are going to be spread all over the industry. You know, we were just talking, now. Dave and I were just talking, and we, you know, people who follow our crowd chat beta, you know, it looks like a little chat client, but it's actually really distributed, really real time through the firewalls using Node.js with That's right. all this kind of real time on a DevOps stack. Back. Okay. It's difficult, it's yes. really, it's not trivial. That's right. It's not just load up and, you know, rails on a MongoDB and I'm done. And this is where, I, of course, I'm, I'm out, I've not really kept track of, you know, exactly what the curriculum for different universities are and they're and not to make criticize them, but that's where, in my opinion, the focus has to change mm -hmm adapt to where the industry is going yeah. of how the next set of uh, you know, computers. As Jeremy Burton again. says, don't go against fashion. That's right. And the fashion <laughs> right now is big data cloud, large scale, yes. distributed large scale, and the management piece is very it's much very a big, big part of it. Yes. I'm gonna, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Always yes. great to talk to you. I think that's gonna be the keynote next year. Large <laughs> scale, <laughs> Joe Tucci. We'll get, we'll get a quick write-up for you. Okay, we'll be right back. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to much. have a great conversation. Uh, always talking computer science here inside the theCUBE. We'll be right back Enjoy. after this short break.